Folks, with one month left in the state legislative session, Minnesota lawmakers are rushing to get their bills passed. Here to tell you which bills to keep an eye on, we have our very own Aaron Woldeslassie in a segment we like to call Bill Review. Bill Rule. The government. Aaron's Bill Review. Thank you, John. This first bill I'll be reviewing is a big one. Bill HF41 is this year's first bathroom bill. Yeah, paraphrase, the bathroom bill restricts access to multi-cell bathrooms, locker rooms, and other facilities based on the biological sex listed on a birth certificate. This bill was created under the guise of creating privacy for students. What it actually does is create a policy of blatant discrimination. And I don't mean uh, the adorable discrimination of following me around CVS. I mean old school discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like old school discrimination. Klansman on the weekend, CVS branch manager on the weekday. Discrimination, <laughs> all right? Yeah. Ignoring the eerie similarities between this law and our nation's early attempts at bathroom discrimination, it should be clear that this bill normalizes the ideas that transgender people shouldn't be respected, which is fucking ridiculous, okay? Yeah. yeah. Because 99% of the people I know are cisgender, and I can tell you, 99% of the people I know are annoying as fuck. <laughs> All right? Trans people don't complain to me about how spicy hummus is too spicy, or how RuPaul is ruining drag. All right? Trans people complain about real shit, like how 40% of trans students attempt suicide at one point, or how everyone is suddenly afraid of being attacked in the bathroom, or how RuPaul is ruining drag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lawmakers want this bill to seem like something that will protect privacy and prevent sexual assault, which is incredibly off-brand for our govern by government, by the way, and disguises a bigger problem in our society. In general, when we see something we don't like or don't understand, we begin to dislike it. We've seen this before in history, and every time we do, we look back and wish we could do it differently. There are about 20,000 transgender students in Minnesota right now. The way they write history will depend on the way we treat them. So for this reason alone, I'm giving this bill two cisgender thumbs downs and a call to my representative. <laughs> HF2196 is a vague bill designed to show people the connection between political parties and sold goods. And as boring as that sounds, you should know that this bill was designed to stop the DFL from selling mini donuts at the state fair. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently they've been doing this for years and making thousands of dollars at it, and Republicans hate this, so they want them to tell people where their mini donut money is going. <laughs> yeah, I say making a bill like this is superfluous and weird, which if we're gonna do, let's just fucking do it, all right? Let's have Republicans go tit for tat. They, they should go to the state fair and sell dry nuts and Paul Ryan body pillows. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right? Look at it and enjoy yourself. <laughs> the party of Reagan's got to get some money in their pockets, man, all right? I'm going to give this bill one star and a bag of sour grapes. Not because I'm a liberal, but because if you do have a problem with cinnamon, dough, healthcare, and the EPA, maybe you're not a conservative. Maybe you're a dick. Yeah. <laughs> The next review will be for Bill HF214, now known as the Drinking Age Bill. Yes, this bill would lower the state's drinking age from 21 to 19. I don't know which newly elected fraternity brother decided to write this bill. But, all right, Chad, I gotta tell ya, it's a terrible idea, all right? St. Patrick's Day was last month, and as anyone that celebrated the holiday can tell you, it doesn't need less maturity. <laughs> All right? And Minnesotans don't do well with alcohol. It's the one beverage that makes you lose your balance in a state covered in ice. Okay? And as much as I love the idea of watching drunk teens slip, fall, and break their femurs every Saturday night, I also hate the idea of having teenagers losing the skills that I had when I ended up getting alcohol when I was 19. What did you do? Blackmail mostly. All right? Yeah. It, what, it was not kind stuff either, but it got results and 
taught me valuable life lessons. <laughs> so for this, I'm going to give this bill three cans of Natty Ice and the compromising pictures of my enemies. <laughs> yes. This next bill was introduced last month. Bill HF329, or as lawmakers are referring to it, the fireworks bill. This bill would allow the sale of aerial and audible devices, better known as firecrackers and bottle rockets. Two devices previously banned for, the, for their ability to explode and cause harm. Yeah, you know, the last time I did this uh, segment, I ended up sharing my personal opinions on fire safety and how afraid of fire I am. Uh, Brian, I think we got a clip. Fire is the ultimate killing machine. If you encounter fire as human being, you can't do anything to fire. You can either leave or die. Yeah, yeah. so I got a lot of flack from that. So this time, I'll calmly explain why this is a fucking ridiculous idea. The thought that a bunch of people will be getting together at night and handling legal explosives is so terrifying, it makes me question why I'm alive, okay? <laughs> but why is this even a desired activity? It's literally the act of shooting fire into the air and watching it fall down on you. Okay? That doesn't sound like 4th of July fun, that sounds like the beginning of the apocalypse, okay? Wait, I mean, what's gonna happen when someone gets hurt or dies? Can you imagine that funeral? Oh, how'd he die? Oh, well, he, he mishandled a tiny bomb made for fun. What? I'm glad he's dead. Me too. <laughs> that widow and mother are right to feel that way. <laughs> right? <laughs> because fireworks are freaking stupid. I'm giving this bill a disappointed widow and a pile of ashes. <laughs> now. Thank you. Thank you. Now let me warn you, my last bill is especially petty. Bill SF368 is a bill that requires all presidential candidates publicly disclose five years of their tax returns prior to getting their names on the ballot. Yeah. Folks, this is much more than election policy. This is side-eye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, writing a bill in direct response to the current president without referencing them is like Real Housewives of Atlanta petty. Okay? That's a nee-nee move. And I am for, I'm for this, by the way, okay? This bill doesn't have a nickname yet, but I've been calling it the Bill, I see you, Bill. All right? All right? right here, right here. All right? To the lawmakers who made this bill, I want to say bravo, good luck, and enjoy your Moscato. I'm giving this bill two stars and three mm-hmmms. Yeah. All right, those are all my bills today. Thank you so much. This has been Bill Review.